A voyage to Mars. In recent times, interest in voyages to Mars have been growing. Russia and the United States and the European Space Agency and India have sent robotic spacecraft to Mars. Manned journeys to Mars are also being planned by private companies now. But some people ask, why are we exploring other planets instead of solving the many problems we face right here on Earth? Space exploration has many indirect benefits. Materials and techniques developed for space programs have proven very useful on Earth too. More than 1800 space technologies developed by NASA were successfully turned into commercial products here on Earth including breast cancer screening. Then there are other important direct applications of space-based technology such as telecommunications, remote sensing and weather forecasting. A dramatic example of technology saving lives was the cyclone failing which struck the eastern coast of India in October 2013. Even though this was the second most severe storm to hit India, loss of life was minimised due to early warnings, thanks to space technology. In contrast, hundreds of thousands of lives were lost in earlier decades during cyclonic storms, when such technologies were not available for accurate forecasting and quick communication. There are also other future benefits of space exploration. Our Earth will not last forever. Our first exploratory steps taken now will perhaps form the basis for future human colonisation of space, expanding our habitat beyond Earth. If we look back at the history of space exploration, we see that it started as a space race between the Soviet Union and the United States. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, Earth's first artificial satellite. Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space aboard Vostok 1 in 1961. In 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin of the USA became the first men to walk on the moon. But since the last mission to the Moon, in 1972, manned spacecraft have not gone beyond Earth orbit. Why have manned craft not gone beyond the Moon? Why not go to our nearest planet, Venus? Why are people trying to go to Mars instead? How long will it take to go there? Let's try and answer these fascinating questions one by one. A manned spaceflight is complicated enough and it becomes much more complicated and risky when we try to move further away from the Earth. Earth's magnetic field protects life on Earth from cosmic rays as well as the solar wind. Cosmic rays are high energy particles and gamma rays coming from outside the solar system, extremely powerful radiation from supernovae and even sources outside of our galaxy. The solar wind is a stream of high energy charged particles coming from the Sun, consisting mostly of protons. Sometimes the Sun also ejects a huge amount of these protons in explosive events called coronal mass ejections or CMEs. As of today, practical spacecraft designs cannot defend an astronaut against radiation from a CME if it happens to be in the direct line of flight, especially if it happens to be directed right at the spacecraft when it is outside the protection of the Earth's magnetic field. 
Our knowledge of cosmic ray radiation is still incomplete. It is estimated that cosmic rays would expose even shielded astronauts to a lifetime's recommended dose of radiation in just a couple of years of the Mars mission. These risks have delayed our exploration of interplanetary travel. Longer distances need larger amounts of fuel. This is also a limiting factor in our journeys. All that fuel needs to be lifted up off the Earth's surface. But the larger the weight, the larger the rocket boosters we need. The Saturn V rockets which took the Apollo astronauts to the Moon have been retired. Rockets with similar lift capacities are currently being developed. To minimise fuel use and time spent, manned missions currently focus on bodies closest to the Earth. Our closest planet is Venus, but Venus has extremely high temperatures and pressures on its surface. Hot enough to make lead flow like water, and pressures as much as one kilometre under the sea of the Earth. Thick clouds in the Venusian atmosphere completely block the view of the surface from orbit. This inhospitable nature of Venus has discouraged human exploration of its surface, although manned flybys and orbits have been carried out. Mars, the next closest planet, has a comparatively better environment for humans. The temperatures and pressures are close to what astronauts deal with in near-Earth orbit. The Martian surface is also clearly visible from orbit. This makes Mars a much more attractive place for human exploration. Exploration of Mars, though easier than any other planet, still has significant challenges. The Martian atmosphere is too thin to support human life. The only way we can move about on the surface is using pressurised spacesuits. The red dust of Martian soil is very abrasive and contains toxic chemicals called perchlorates. Great care will have to be taken by Mars explorers to carefully wash down their spacesuits to get rid of the poisons before returning to their spacecraft or Mars colony homes. A significant challenge for any interplanetary travel. A significant challenge for any interplanetary travel is the psychological effect of prolonged confinement. These journeys take several months, more than a year for a return trip. While travelling in interplanetary space, astronauts will have to bear cramped surroundings and subsist on canned foods. Radio communications with Earth will have delays of a few minutes. This would make real-time conversation impossible. It would take exceptionally steady heads to remain sane in such a trying environment. Human ingenuity always finds a way to surmount the toughest challenges. The current ideas in manned flight to Mars include two viable ideas. One is a flyby return trip where the astronauts will return to Earth after orbiting Mars without actually reaching the surface. The other one is a one-way trip to Mars where the astronauts will land on Mars and build a colony there. Mars missions will aim for Mars when it is closest to the Earth. This happens every two years and two months, with a further minimum every 16 years. The launch windows in 2018 and 2020 are particularly exciting. If a permanent colony on Mars were to succeed, they would need to recycle water and other nutrients 
and also set up machinery to extract oxygen and water from Martian minerals. Food and other supplies will still need to be regularly sent from Earth. The extremely harsh living conditions and isolation from the rest of humanity is likely to take a toll on the first settlers. The smallest mistakes may well be fatal. New technologies currently in development promise us that future settlers would have better options. Plasma engines are being developed which would cut down the travel time to Mars from six months or more to just 40 days. But these engines need a very powerful electrical power source of the order of 2 megawatts. Such a powerful but lightweight power source is yet to be developed. Solar panels or even nuclear reactors supplying such a large amount of power are currently too heavy to use for a practical spacecraft design. Yet, man might take his first steps on Martian soil very shortly. Who knows? We might establish a permanent home there, digging under the Martian soil in order to shelter from the harsh radiation environment, mining the minerals there for sustenance and even export. One day, we might even make Mars suitable for human life, making it humanity's second home.